I'm Melissa, I'm 18 years old and I'm a baton twirler with the Angel Baton Twirlers who train in Norwich and I've been twirling for 13 years. I've been in the England team on two occasions. I would define baton twirling as a combination of gymnastics, dance and kind of strength and stamina. It's a kind of similar sport to rhythmic gymnastics with the elements of dance um, mixed in with flexibility. I started in pattern twirling when a mother of one of my friends came to me and asked if I'd like to join the troupe and went training and really enjoyed it. When I first started twirling everyone was really supportive of, of me and my, my friends that all started around the same time. The community kind of gives you the confidence to to kind of go forward and to believe in yourself. People have lots of stereotypes about the difficulty of baton twirling and it isn't known by many people the level of work we have to put into it and you do come away from training quite often with aches and pains and, and bruises and, and bumps and there's been lots of broken bones at training. It can be quite dangerous as well as, as difficult. It is difficult to twirl and it, and it is difficult to train. It's one of those things where if someone is a baton twirler, you'll, you'll always have people going, oh, I can do that, I, I did a bit of that when I was little, or I, I can kind of, you know, twirl something around my fingers, and, and people don't really understand the extent of control you need to actually do a lot of the things that we do. There's also, obviously, the elements of dance and flexibility that you have to work on that take a lot of time. As you progress, a lot of back flexibility is needed. Um, for things like walkovers and no hand or cartwheels. For some things you need a combination of, of splits and back flexibility to do things like an illusion where you have to kind of have your head down and your legs in the air at the same time. I was on the England team in 2011 and 2013. The sort of training that we do for international competitions was um, a lot longer days, things like six to eight hours a day. Everyone that was in the England squad would come from different parts of the country. It was nice because these, these were people that you only really saw at competitions normally, so it would only be that kind of two, three, four times a year, whereas then it became kind of once a fortnight. Although we can't go to the Olympics at this point in time, we do have world championships that we can go to. They're held in a different country every year and once every two years. They're kind of top level. A lot of training is needed to compete at world level. When I competed, I was training five to six days a week for about two, three hours at a time. One of the routines we do that's that's just called a solo twirl is, is a routine that's made up of three main sections, which is vertical twirling, a, a roll section and a horizontal section. A solo will also have tricks in as well, which vary in difficulty. A two baton is similar to a solo, but with two battens instead of one. It still has to have the same sections, although it has the extra added element of the battens going in different directions. We also have three baton, which isn't quite as structured. You still need the same elements, but it's a lot more free in three baton because of the third baton, which kind of has to be in the air for the majority of the routine. It's judged very similarly to diving or, or gymnastics in that they look at the overall kind of presentation of the routine as the main basis of, of the score that they'll give you, as well as the execution of the tricks and the twirling that you do and the level of difficulty. To be at a competition is really nerve wracking. Once you start your routine, once you kind of start performing and competing, everything kind of blanks out. You don't really notice what's going on. A lot of people don't think baton twirling is a sport, mainly because it's not as well known as most other sports. I think people that don't think it's a sport just don't know enough about it and need to be a lot better informed. I think baton twirling should be in the Olympics because it is so similar to rhythmic gymnastics. It doesn't really make a lot of sense that it's not. The only reason that it isn't really is the number of countries that compete worldwide and the fact that the global community is split into two governing bodies, which then makes it difficult to bring everyone together to then compete in the Olympics. So then to hold a kind of selection process for the Olympics would be difficult.